Hi guys and welcome back to Wardle Road. Now in today's video you'll see we're not at the Common Valley Railway, we're just down the road at the East Anglian Railway Museum and in today's video we're going to be talking to a couple of chaps who work in the restoration department and they're going to be showing us a little bit of behind the scenes of some of the wagons they've been working on and as well as that we're going to be looking at a 20 ton brake van they're working on as well. So as always if you guys are enjoying the content please do hit the thumbs up and if this is your first time here please do subscribe and if you'd like to find out a little bit more about this place I will leave a link to their website in the description below so you can come and see it for yourself. But other than that let's roll the intros and find out a little bit more about this place. Hello, um, I'm Kevin. I currently work here at the East Anglian Railway Museum, mainly focused on the uh, carriage and wagon side of things. Anything that is wooden bodied is normally my forte. And uh, we're currently here in the big restoration shed that we're very fortunate to have these facilities so we can work undercover, especially in the winter. And uh, hopefully we can show you one or two of the things we're up to. I started work here oh, about 15 years ago and this was a vehicle that had been taken apart and it was standing outside for a number of years. Yeah, I got on a personal note quite attached to this because a lot went into this into bringing it back from a complete wreck just to be a doable item. Um, it was completely rebuilt, the bottom, bottom two and a half foot. It was suspended in midair on props and goodness knows what else while we rebuilt the build rail and the framework and so on and uh, brought it back and uh, really pleased with it. It's a real unique vehicle. It's like a mobile workshop that used to go around and calibrate uh, Pooley weighing machines, hence the name, the Pooley van, that we call it. And uh, it's getting there. We've still got to do the inside, and uh, the plan is for it to go in the exhibition shed and be open for the public to see this unique vehicle. I believe it's uh, the only one of its kind. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, Robert, my colleague, he's been behind us. He's done the work um, in terms of the painting. It did get a paint up years ago when it was initially rebuilt, um, but it's had a refresh in recent times. And uh, yep, there it is, looking good. And uh, looking forward to that being finished and on, dis on display, basically. One of the reasons um, why we sort of contacted Ollie was to come down here because obviously we're in the same boat. We've got this vehicle and uh, it started off something that was going to be a, a quick fix, but obviously it's opened up into a bigger job. And uh, I thought it would be beneficial all round for Ollie to come and have a look and uh, we can sort of discuss what's going on and uh, hopefully give him some pointers as well. Once we actually opened it up, we moved the cladding um, it was clear a lot of the main structure, I um, mean what we call the build rail down the bottom um, was gone, literally the bottom two foot. So uh, we sort of concentrated on stripping out anything that is rotten and uh, it opened up an awful lot. But now we're actually putting things back and we're giving the vehicle a bit of integrity and uh, it's getting a bit, of, a bit of straightness, a bit of squareness back and uh, it's starting to go the other way. And uh, behind us, Rob has actually cleaned up an awful lot of the paintwork. Um, he's, he's treated it, he's put it in primer and undercoat. And uh, yeah, it's going the other way now. And uh, it's starting to turn into a very enjoyable project where it was a bit of a headache to begin with, I must admit. But uh, we're just about starting to win with it. The next step 
is we want to get the build rail in in its entirety um, only temporarily temporarily in like a lot of things make sure it fits make sure it's parallel make sure it's square there's a lot of joinery techniques have got to go in there and we've got to overcome a few through problems but we'll get there and then that'll all come out and then we'll treat it paint it and then it'll go back in and then that's where we'll start fixing it permanently obviously once we've then got all the framework complete we may well put the new roof on and then it's only then that we'll probably look at placing it back onto the chassis which as you'll see um, later on the chassis outside that's having some work done on, to, on it as well by the engineers and so hopefully we won't be too far off marrying the two up Hi, I'm Rob. I work here at the East Anglian Railway Museum. Um, my role here is I'm the on-site painter, so my job covers mainly working on all the rolling stock, on also on the estates, the buildings, everything included in that. I've also been a volunteer here for a few years, so I'm sort of involved here outside of my job role in terms of operational-wise, so I help sort of run the trains and just be involved, just generally help with the museum outside of my work role as well. What we're standing next to is actually the last remaining member of its class. So what we've got here is, uh, is N class N7. So originally it was 135 examples, this one being the only example left. This one is quite very significant because it is actually the last locomotive that was built at Stratford Works. It would have worked on the Great Eastern Lines in and out of uh, Liverpool Street Station, mainly doing suburban work from out from Liverpool Street up as far as Enfield Town and so in North London. Built in 1924 and it worked all the way up until at least 1962, where it was privately where it was purchased privately, and it was stored for many years at Leeds Neville Hill Shed, and eventually it moved from there to where it is currently now here at the museum came down via the main line. In order to actually move it from the main line to here, the track was actually slewed over by volunteers on the day in order to transfer it to here. So it underwent quite an extensive overhaul. A lot of it was actually outside at the time because the shed that was standing in here wasn't actually here. This only went up about nearly 40 years ago. So uh, late 80s, it was actually completed. So and then it actually went out quite quickly on high. It went down to South End for 1991 for the celebrations down there. And then for a few years in the early 90s, it actually worked on the branch line here between Markstown and Sudbury on a Sunday doing the services. And it was here at the museum for many years. And then it went out on long-term hire for several other railways, most notably the North Norfolk Railway. From there, it, went, it carried on there for many years. From there, it went on hire to other railways. It came back to us briefly 10 years ago when we had our 40th anniversary celebration. It had some remedial work done on there in the meantime, and then about seven years ago, its boiler ticket expired. So from there on, it came back to the museum where it was on static display. until a couple of years ago that we actually had a few bequests and actual money given to us that we were able to carry out some restoration work on it. So we started involving us stripping it all down. So the inside motion was all stripped down. A lot of the outer cladding on the boiler was stripped down. The boiler itself was removed. That is currently off site being done by outside contractor. And in the meantime, we've done a lot of work um, 
continuing to strip it down, particularly uh, the valve chest, valve bores, the inside motion. It's all been stripped back, a lot of it repainted. And originally, this, we had this loco in its um, BR livery, so it would have been late BR livery, so the late BR crest on it. So it was um, 69621, but currently, what we've proposed, what, as you can see what we've got on the side here, we're actually putting it back into its LNER livery, so just before, just wartime periods. So it's going to be 9621 is what we'll be running it as. So we'll actually sort of be working through the progression deliveries on it again. So, yeah, currently, yeah, the boiler is being worked on, so there's a lot of new materials have been acquired for it, and then they'll hopefully be starting works on it sort of due, in due course. So, yeah. We've managed to, we've reassembled a lot of what we've got here on the frame. So everything was stripped down, coupling rods were all taken off. We stored, we painted up a lot of the frames and yeah, we actually had someone come and sign write it, the, the tanks and the buffer beams as well. So yeah, we're sort of at a stage now where we've done quite a lot in here and really, you know, despite, you know, a few other things that we need to do, really the boiler is sort of the main key element that we just need now, so yeah. What we have here is an old Great Eastern coach. We know it as the Chapel coach, and uh, it was built in the 1870s. Um, you've got two passenger compartments, and then you've got a, a large brake compartment come luggage. And uh, this has been an ongoing project now for probably about 10 years, and uh, we've gone the, the whole hog. The actual chassis is a wooden chassis that's been recreated um, from a couple of old chassis. So we've done a bit of recycling there, and we've managed to make a complete new wooden chassis and the engineering department have then carried on with bits and pieces that was accumulated over a few decades here, and they've managed to really kill it out, kit it out in terms of the brakes. It's actually been vacuum braked as well, and obviously they've been making new parts where there's been missing pieces. And uh, the only thing they've got to do now, really, is get the, um, get the springs. Um, but I'm mainly, mainly involved with above the waistline there, We've actually, this is another one we've, we've sort of more or less totally rebuilt and uh, yeah, we've incorporated the old mouldings, the, the fret work has been redone, the ducats have been rebuilt, um, a lot of stabilisation of the framework uh, and so on. And uh, this, this end here with the double doors, this will actually be used as wheelchair access and so on. And uh, we've even, uh, we've done the interior as well, recreated the old bench seats well, they are is a bench seat. There's no upholstery in this vehicle at all. And uh, we're, we're getting there. We've still got the roof to canvas and so on. But uh, I think the plan is to have this possibly in, in two or three, time, three years' time um, in use. They want to use it, along with um, two other Great Eastern coaches that we've got. And uh, that would be very nice to see these behind the N7. And uh, yeah, that would be the plan. Like a lot of these vehicles, what saved them is uh, when a secondary use came along, they got took out of service and they'd either be used as parts of dwellings or a combination of them put together, two or three of them put together and people would use them as accommodation and so on. But this one's a little bit different in that it was actually used as a place of worship. It was actually used as a chapel. Um, so a double meaning there where we call it the chapel coach. It's been a chapel for many years. The body actually sat out on the bank there for many, many years, but it was actually used as a chapel. So that's a nice little, um, little spin on it. Uh, this is um, Diesel Shunter. We nickname it here as the WD for War Department. So this one was constructed at the end, towards the end of the war, 1945. So it worked in the industry, particularly for the military purposes. So it worked chiefly around a lot of the docks, actually, really towards the end of the war. Um, this one has been actually on loan. To the, it was on loan to the museum for a few years ago, because while our other shunter was off-site having work done on it. So we had this for a while. And then recently, the gentleman actually sold this on. So this is now actually part of the museum's fleet. 
At the moment, it's undergoing a restoration in terms of the actual engine components itself, so it's been stripped right down. It's also getting a complete repaint, both inside the cab and outside, so everything has been stripped right back to its bare form of metal. Um, I know the gearbox is, is having quite an extensive amount of work done on it as well, so that's actually being sent away. Yeah, so this one is also quite regular when we're actually using, when we're doing any shunting movements or if we're using a diesel locomotive. So yeah, so that when complete, this will actually form as part of you know, several of obviously the little shunters that we've got here. This one, I believe it's gonna go back near to its original color. So this would have been in its full department green. So, which is obviously what it carried before when it was here. So it would have had its initials on the side, just WD. So it will be pretty close to that, the original color of what it was. So quite a deepish green that we've got. Yeah, it's quite unique because um, until the actual reservoir builds up inside, the brakes cannot be released on this. So yeah, you, you've got the ability to work any air brake stock and vacuum brake stock with this, yeah. Most of the other logos that we've got on site are all vacuum brakes. Anyway, but there, this one has the luxury of being able to do both. So, but mostly all of our stock, bar one vehicle, is air brakes. We do have another diesel shunner on site that is only air brakes that we use on our Thomas days, which acts as Toby. And the coach that goes with it is, uh, is Henrietta, which is actually a converted, uh, one of the old VA wagons that was actually converted to look like a Henrietta. So that's the only other air brake thing that we actually use on site. But yeah, mostly it's all vacuum brakes, so, so yeah. What we have here is um, one of a rare few survivors, actually. We've, what we've got here is, uh, is a rail bus. This one was actually built, one of five actually built as a prototype for particularly in the late 1950s when the railways were looking to actually make a lot of cuts and actually save a lot of money in terms of the economics of the railway. So particularly for the branch lines in order to try and save money. So that obviously involved coming away from obviously using steam traction and how to make more economic use of the branch line. So these were seen as sort of a new way forward. This one was one of five built by actually a German company and they were built more sort of a prototype as an experiment to see how the scheme would work. So yeah, there's five built in total. I believe there are actually four of these still in preservation. This one is actually very significant because it's probably one of the most local things that we have here at the museum. So yeah, there is actually photographs of it actually working at this particular line itself. So in its early years, it actually it ended up finishing its days on the Saffron and Walden to Orleans branch is where it finished its last service. Um, it was purchased you know, 10 years ago by the museum. It spent most of its life on, on the North Norfolk Railway came here 10 years ago, to which we did a very extensive overhaul on it, which involved a lot of um, the bodywork being redone, a complete new set of all the electrics, everything in it overhauled completely. We've had one chap here who's, who's exceptionally good in that role. He used to work particularly in radio and radars, and he has done complete overhaul, all the electrics on it, which has been a real nightmare. And, said a lot of the bodywork was redone, all the interior redone, and it's just undergone a full repaint. And it came back into traffic last year during our diesel gala. So the intention now is we're using it sort of more on midweek days and weekend days. So normally when we don't run steam engines, we will most definitely have this out for sort of our other service trains for, for the week. Yeah. Right, and that brings us to the end of the video. Now, a huge thanks to Rob and Kev for speaking to me today and putting aside some of their time to talk us through a few of the projects they've been working on here. But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. And as always, if you did enjoy, 
please do hit the thumbs up. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about this place, I will leave a link in the description. And if there's anywhere you'd like me to visit, any places that you think would make a great video, please do leave it in the comment section below as well. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video.